This video discusses the wiring of the components inside the high voltage control enclosure. You should now have the control enclosure assembled with the parts inside of it, all except the battery. The battery will be installed at the very last step of this video after we've wired all the components together. So your control box should look like this, with the components mounted inside and ready to receive their wiring. You want to make sure your wiring is unpackaged and laid out next to the high voltage control enclosure along with the tools you need to do this work. All of the wiring is numbered and color coded to match the terminal points inside the system. We're going to start with the wire that has connections number 9 and 10 for the DIN rail. This is a complicated looking wire with multiple colored connections in it, segments of green, red, and blue and let's put that wire into place on the system. So if we take a close look at the termination points of each wire connection, we'll see a numerical designation, and these numbers will match at the points that they connect inside the high voltage control enclosure. Here we're looking at connections for terminations 9 and 10. These will connect into the DIN rail and have other connections on the other side of the DIN rail opposite of 9 and 10, 19 and 20, and these will continue their connections to other parts of the vehicle. So you can see the numbers are on the wire itself and on the po point in the system where the wires are connected. So we're simply going to insert the wire at its proper numerical connection and then tighten it down inside the DIN rail. The wires do have a correct position. When they fit inside the DIN rail spots, make sure that they're in the right position so they slide all the way in. And make sure you have a good snug fit, tighten it down, and give it a little test before you move on to the next connection. The connecting hardware, the screws that you're tightening, are already inside the rail. You don't have to add them or find them and, and put them in. And again, once you get everything tightened down, give it a little tug and make sure you have a good connection before moving on to the next part of the sequence. So here we've connected 9 and 10. So let's talk about what these wires do. The green wire gets power when the car is turned on and the blue wire gets power when the charger is turned on. And what they do on the other side is we're going to connect these to the connection points on the DIN rail where the lights come on for the dashboard. The green light and the blue light that indicate power to each of those different systems. The other plug goes to the fans so that when the charger is on or the vehicle is on, the fans are on. And these also have a diode built in so that the power can't backflow into the system to cause any other problems. So our next step in plugging these wires together is to plug the wires we just connected on 9 and 10 into the positive side of the fan. And that should be right there where we install the wire. That wi the wire is matched to be the right length to just simply plug in. And you'll see it labeled on the end. So continuing on with this set of wires, we'll attach the blue wire. And this connects to charger relay position number 6. Position 6 is one of the 8 different positions on our charger relay connections. Here we can see that in the black part of the DIN rail. So our technician here will point out and we'll put this on position number six. Each of these positions is numbered for the charger relay. The charger relay plugs into the center circular part of this section of the DIN rail. And this relay performs different functions. One of the functions of the relay is to prevent the vehicle from being operated while the charger is plugged in. So you can't drive away with the charge cord attached to the vehicle. This is what the relay looks like up close, and if you look at the bottom, you can see the circular pattern of the plugs, and each one is actually numbered 1 through 8, and corresponding to the positions that we're attaching our connections to now. So to connect the wire, we simply remove the screw and insert the terminal position on the wire onto the terminal point 6 and tighten it back down. Next, we're going to connect our 12 volt transformer. This connects to positions number two and seven on the charge relay. The 12 volt transformer actually provides power to the relay so it can perform its functions and protect the vehicle from being operated while the charge cord is plugged in. We have three relays in our system 
the charge relay we're addressing here, right next to it on the DIN rail is the timer relay. And then we have a reverse relay in the corner of the box that we'll address later. Uh, the next step we're going to do after we finish attaching these two wires is connect, make a connection to the timer relay. So let's take a look at that process next. Our first connection to the timer relay is wire number 18. This is the combination green and white wire that come off of the DIN rail. And you can see the label on the end of the connection just like all the other terminations with number 18 on the timer relay. The timer relay is the gray relay in the center of the DIN rail. So we'll take a close up at our position number 18 here on the timer relay. This is the same type of connection as the terminal parts of the DIN rail. Um, we insert the termination and then tighten it down from the top with the screw inside the relay. We want to make sure that we get a good tight connection. And also want to point out, don't confuse the timer relay with position 18 on the terminal section of the DIN rail. Next, we're going to connect the negative wire from the fan. This goes on the isolated side of the common ground. And we can leave this connection loose as we're going to add other wires to this uh, isolated side of the common ground later on in this, um, in this assembly process. We'll finish up now with the white wire. This is the last remaining connection of that earlier loom that we started. This goes to the main contactor 12 volt positive. So we'll, we'll route the wire uh, through the wire stays and across the box to the main contactor. And then we'll attach it to the positive 12 volt terminal on that main contactor. Next we're going to install four wires that follow a common path inside the high voltage control box. We're going to show them together because they follow the same path even though they go to different terminations in the box. Two of the wires will terminate at the controller, one will terminate at the reverse relay, and, an, and the final one will just end up at the opening at the back of the control enclosure where, we'll, where we will have another cable harness coming in and it, it will ultimately connect to one of the wires coming in from that cable harness. So the first thing we want to do is get the wires together and route them through the stays and runs on the back of the box. And we start over by the charge plug and just run across. We'll leave one, the green wire terminates at the reverse relay in the corner of the box. We'll just leave that there for now. It's a good practice to keep the wiring as neat and organized as possible as we go through each step. Um, the orange wire is the one in this bundle that ends up near the opening in the box for later attachment to the cable harness coming in. And we'll complete the connection of this orange wire later on after the high voltage control enclosure is installed into the vehicle and, and that harness is attached into the opening. The other two wires remaining are the black and white wires for controller positions two and three. Uh, the black wire goes on position number two and the white wire onto position number three. And they just slide on the spade terminals on the front of the controller. The final green wire that we left in the corner of the box goes to reverse relay position number 85. And we'll take a close up look here at our relay. Uh, you can see again these are all numbered uh, around the four different tabs on the reverse relay. And this is the position it's in in the box so you can see 85 on the side. I'll make a quick comment about position number 87. You see the 87A, that's for a center terminal post that's actually not on this relay. Position 87 is actually shadowed by the spade itself so it's you can't see the number 87 but it's there underneath that top terminal. So with these connections made on the one side of these wires, let's look at the other end of the wires and see how they connect into our DIN rail. The black and white wires go to positions number 7 and 8 on the terminal part of the DIN rail. 
uh, the black being position number eight, we'll install that one first. And then we'll do the white wire at position number seven and connect that in. These two black and white wires come from the pot box circuit and that's the device that moves when you step on the accelerator pedal. And then our green wire goes to position number four on the DIN rail terminal connections. This is the backup signal uh, going to the reverse relay. You'll start to notice as you continue your, your assembly that the DIN rail numbers are related to each other. On the other side of 7 is 17, the other side of 8 is 18, and so forth. Uh, so the other side of the black and white wires are the wires that come in from the pot box. And the other side of the green wire at number 4 is number 14, and that comes in from the reverse contactor. And then numbers 5 and 15 are the forward contactor. You can think of the DIN rail as the meeting place for the wires that come from the front of the vehicle to the rear of the vehicle and the control components inside. So next we got to finish up our, our orange wire. This goes to charge relay position number three and we'll make that connection now. Next we have DIN rail wires number five and six that go to the forward and reverse contactor. These are green and blue wires that will connect to the DIN rail and then ultimately over to the forward and reverse contactors. These wires go to the positive side of the contactors in the forward and reverse contactor assembly. So we'll, we'll connect them to the DIN rail. Um, blue is the positive for the forward contactor and that goes into position number six. And then green goes into position number five. This is the positive wire for the reverse contactor. The other end of these wires are going to connect to the contactor on the positive terminal. And we'll take a close look at that terminal and how it looks as we see the contactor from the side. You can see they're clearly marked positive and negative. The other test for getting the blue and white wires to the correct positions on the terminal is the length of the wire. The green wire is longer and reaches farther to the reverse contactor. So we finish up by plugging these onto the positive terminal on each of the contactors. Next we'll make our negative side connections. Uh, this is a common black wire with two terminations on it. Um, we're going to make the common connection on the common ground post first so we get the lengths right. These again are a little bit farther distances away from the common ground post. So connect that side first. And we can leave this loose. We still have more connections on the common ground. And finish up by connecting your negative wires onto the negative spade, negative terminal sides of the contactors. Okay, our next step is to connect two red wires to the reverse relay. And we're going to connect to position number 30 and 87 on the reverse relay. Position 30 is on the bottom and that's easier to put on first so we'll do that and then we'll do the next one above at 87. And we'll take another close-up look at our relay to be reminded of how these pins are positioned. Um, when you take a look at the, the close-up you can see 30 on the bottom. You see 87A in the middle. 87 is actually the top one. Sometimes these relays have five spades. Uh, this one only has four and 87A would have been the center position. So the other end of the wire on that terminal number 87 goes to controller position number four. Route it around the contactor and plug it onto position number four. And then the wire from position 30 on the relay goes around the contactor and connects to the top post on the minus A2 side of the main contactor. Don't worry about locking down the minus A2 nut and washer yet. We have other connections that will go on to, to this position later. Next we have a red wire that has a fuse built into it and a diode. Uh, this wire provides power to the controller and will connect to controller spade position number one. And then the other side of this fused wire goes to main contactor position minus A2. 
sharing that post with the earlier connection. Look at the negative side of the main contactor. We have a black wire that goes from the minus 12 volt terminal on the top of the main contactor and connects to relay position number 86. And then the third element of this wire, the one with the eyelet, goes around the box and connects up ultimately to our common isolated ground post. So we'll start by plugging in the spade onto reverse relay number 86, position number 86. And then we'll move over to the main contactor minus 12 volt side and make that termin termination. And then we'll end up at, back at the common ground. Again, make sure you route your wire neatly through the wire stays and run so that everything's nice and collected as we go through each step in this process. It's a lot easier to do this as we go along than to try to connect everything into those stays at the end. Next, we'll move on to wiring in our DC to DC converter. If you're assembling your vehicle for the very first time, you may have to assemble the plug that goes into the DC to DC converter. We'll show you how to do that here. If your vehicle has already been assembled and you're just plugging this device in, all you'll need to do is plug the plug into the DC to DC converter. So we'll work our way across and assemble this plug. The first wire into the plug is the 12 volt minus. Next we have the 12 volt positive coming from the DC to DC. And here you can see how these are all labeled on the actual part itself if you have to assemble the plug. We have the negative pack in. This comes from the larger battery pack, the traction pack that charges the 12 volt battery. And then the positive side from the pack. And then our final connection is the enable, the red, smaller gauge red wire that's labeled enable. Again, if you don't have, if you're building this cart from an earlier assembly, this plug may already be assembled and all you'll have to do is plug it into the back of the DC to DC converter. There is a lockdown that locks these terminations into place on the plug and you can snap that into place if you're building it for the first time. So just to review our connections, we have the minus out for 12 volts, the positive 12 volts out, then the minus in from the pack voltage, and the positive in from the pack voltage, and then the enable connection with the smaller gauge wire. Remember the DC to DC converter takes the larger pack voltage from the traction battery and charges the 12 volt auxiliary battery. Here's the plug-in connection when everything's assembled. Just plug it in and make sure you have a good tight secure connection. The other side of these cables go to parts inside the high voltage control enclosure. Uh, the first two black and red wires go to the 12 volt auxiliary battery. For safety reasons, while we're assembling components in the box, the 12 volt battery is the last thing that we're going to install. So for now, we'll just set these two cables aside. So the other end of our wiring, the